Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to be running through light and shadow and why it's important to learn this whilst learning to draw. I'll be giving you an explanation on how you can spot certain light sources, and then I'll be moving on to a demonstration showing you how you can implement this into your work. There won't be a project for this lesson, it's just more of an understanding and giving you the basic information you need before we move on to the next lesson where there will be a project for you to practice this. So, let's just give you a quick breakdown of how light and shadows is used within drawing. Light and shadow is an important element for artists, especially when you create the illusion of depth within your work. When light falls on an object, regardless of what source it is, it creates a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other. This is what gives the object that you're drawing a sense of three-dimensionality, which is what makes it look more realistic. Shadows are really important too, as that's what gives the illusion of depth within your work, especially when shadows are formed on other objects or things around it, not just on the object that you're drawing. There's three aspects of the type of lighting that will affect the way that drawing will look. These are the quality, the intensity, and the direction of the light that's used. This is important to know, especially if you're creating a still life scene and you want to create a certain mood within your drawing. These aspects of lighting will affect this dramatically. However, if you're not setting up a still life scene and you're just trying to understand this, this is good reference to know, especially when you're trying to draw from imagination. Understanding how the different light source, the direction and the quality will affect the shadows on your work. So getting to grips with this is really beneficial, especially when you're creating for imagination. This is the benefit of understanding how lighting works, is it gives the illusion of a three-dimensional object on a 2D surface. This is just an introduction and we'll be getting into more depth in the following lessons. Okay, as a quick demonstration, just to mark out the shadows and the highlights in my own work, I'm going to be putting up a few images on the screen and then going through, talking through it and highlighting highlighted sections and the shadow sections, just to give you an understanding of which parts I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is here's a few of the images that I've created in the past. I'm just going to go through and mark out some of the highlights and the shadows just to give you a better idea of how I've created depth within these illustrations. So firstly, let's start off with this snowman. So as you can see that the, the main light source is coming in from the left. Um, so all this section here is my highlights. And then because of that, um, the shadows from this ball has caused a shadow on the body. Um, so this area being the, the, the shadows. Secondly, here's a Christmas post that I did. Um, so again, we've got the light coming in from this top left hand side. So all this section of the ball um, is being exposed to the highlights. Hence why that side is lighter. And generally a rule of a rule of thumb is that the shadows are always on the opposite side of the highlights. So going in now, so the shadows are on the right hand side. And then finally, here's a little bit more of a complex one because there's little things like creases um, and textures of clothes, which is which is um, difficult in itself. But starting off with this afro, which is generally generally uh, a shape of a ball. Again, I've got the light coming in from the top left hand side. So the afro itself has a highlight on this side and then a shadow on this side. And then this can be spotted throughout the, the whole of the illustration. So because the light's coming in from this side, everything facing that side has got highlights on them. And then on the opposite side, you've got shadow, shadows, uh, more shadows, and then obviously the shadow from the jumper on the trousers, and then the shadow from the leg. Um, so here's just a brief, a brief intro into how we're going to be breaking it down into the next following lessons. I just want to show you how I've used it in the past, and then I'll be explaining this to you in the lessons to come. If you are trying to take inspiration from their work, it's good to know where the highlights are, where the shadows are, where they've come from and how they've lit it or how they've chose to light that drawing so then you can kind of recreate that in your own too. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. As a quick recap, I'll just give you a basic introduction into highlights and shadows and how you can spot this in other people's work, as understanding lighting can be quite a complex subject. So in the following lessons, I've split this up into a much more digestible way for you to understand it, along with some exercises. In the next lesson, we're going to be going into more depth into lighting and how you can analyze it. I'll be giving you a lot more demonstrations in that lesson. Let's just get to it.